so this is how to conjugate a verb in Spanish. So this right here is your yo, which is also what it means is I. This is tu, T-U, and it has a little uh, thing like this, and you say it like this, tu. This is el, ella, and usted. And that means he, she, and you. On the other side, we have nosotros, which means we. You have vosotros, which is we, but it's like, um, it's not used very often. So mostly we use this one. We have to learn it. And then this one is ellos, ellas, or ustedes. Yes. This means he, but it's plural. So more than one he. Ellas, which is she, and it's plural. And then you, but plural. So this is kind of the framework for a verb. And I know this doesn't make sense yet. You're like, what the heck? Why would they have a framework for the verb? I will show you. So, when you have a verb like hablar, that means to speak. You're not going to say hablar. You're going to say hablo, hablas, habla, hablamos. I don't know if they're going to teach you vosotros, but I'll just teach it to you. Hablam más and hablan. So, when you have something that you're saying, if you're going to say, I speak Spanish, you don't say, yo hablar español. You just say, hablo español. And because it ends in an O, that is how you say, I speak. If you were to say, hablas, that means you speak. And then if you say, habla, that means either he speaks, ella, she speaks, or usted, you speak. Instead of saying, we speak, and saying nosotros hablar, you would just say hablamos. And this tells someone that you're basically saying we speak. And then this one is the vosotros. I don't think you're going to learn it. Um, and it's not used very often. And then this one is either they speak like a group of boys, a group of girls, or you speak. So, does that make sense? When you have a verb that ends in AR, you take off the AR and you put an O if you're talking about yo, hablo, I speak. You take off the AR and you add AS if you want to say tu. But you don't say this. This is just showing you. You just say hablas. And then habla is either él, ella, or usted. Habla. And then this one is the nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, or ustedes. So that is an AR verb. There's a few different verbs. You could also have an ER verb like comer and that's that ends in ER and you would still have your diagram but you would take this off and it would be O, is, E, emos, es, and N and you would just put the comb in front of it.
So, como, comes, come, comemos, comemes, comen. Is it kind of starting to make sense a little bit? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. this means to eat. So if you're saying, I eat tacos, you would just say, como tacos. You wouldn't say, I eat tacos. This whole thing means I eat. If you said, Lauren eats, but you're just saying she eats, you would say, come tacos. If but you're I can't say comer tacos. No, because this means to eat. So basically, if you were to say come tacos, you would say to eat tacos. Mm. So you have to, they call it conjugating. You have to take the ER off and use the proper ending. And that's tricky, right? Because you have to do it in like a second, right? Yeah. And yeah. so you have to go, I don't know, am I talking about, am I included in that? So me and Lauren, you and Lauren, would be comemos tacos. And then suppose you weren't home and Lauren, Ed, and Jenny ate tacos, you would say comen tacos. And then you're asking somebody, do you eat tacos? You would say comes tacos and you would make your voice go up. So you would say, comes tacos, so that they knew you were asking a question. And then in Spanish, they have um, a question mark like this and a question mark like this. And that's how they do questions. So you have a punctuation here and you have a punctuation here. One is right side up, one is right uh, backwards. Okay, the next thing is a verb that ends in IR, like vivir. Vivir means to live. And that's why we can't say vivir in Redwood City, because you're basically asking the person to live in Redwood City. So you would say, I live. You would add the O. You live. He, she, or you live. This is um, formal. So if you're talking to your aunt, who is higher than you in the hierarchy, she's not your peer, she's not your friend, you use this. And that's a sign of respect. So that's how it yeah, kind of Yeah, that's, that's the one thing I learned. Um, yeah. Isn't usted, it's like if you use that, that's like showing respect. Yeah, so it, it's kind of weird because you have to do all this in real time, right? And uh -huh. so you're like, ah, but it's okay because when you're actually speaking it, Spanish-speaking people are very kind and they don't, they're so nice about it. Uh -huh. um, and then when you have to do, take a test, you're going to get marked off for these things. Uh -huh. But you have time to think about it because you're writing it down. Okay, so this would be vivo means I live in Redwood City. So you would say, vivo in Redwood City. And then if you were saying you, you would say, vivas in Redwood City. Vive in Redwood City. Vivimos, we live in Redwood City. Vimis. And Vivin in Redwood City. Um, <clears throat> okay, so those are the three main types of verbs. A verb is either going to end in AR, IR, or ER. Now, I won't get into it, but there's crazy ones, just like in our language, but not very much. <laughs> so... You do have to use those. Those are called irregular verbs, and they have their own rules. So it's just kind of what you have to kind of learn. So um, I don't know. Did you learn the sounds yet? Like how some stuff isn't pronounced or it's different yeah. than us? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So the main ones are when you have a double R, you roll your R. Uh -huh. So, 
Perro. And then you have yeah. double R's. Um, LL is actually a Y sound. That's why tortilla. Tortilla. Mm. It's a ya sound. Um, this, the color amarillo. So this is a Y sound. Amarillo. And then mm -hmm. um, H is a H sound. And H is silent. So this is a H. And this is a no sound. Nothing. So if you say... Um, what's an H word in Spanish? Um, oh, here's a good one. So we say hotel. They say hotel. No H sound. Hotel. Mm. Um, 